except Allah. That you know that you have no hope except in Allah. When you raise your hands, what are you going to say to Allah? What deeds do you have that are sincere for the sake of Allah? That Allah will move mountains as a result of your dua? What do we have? Think about it, everyone right now. What can you say? If you don't have anything, then you better start doing something about it. Know Allah in times of ease, and He will know you in times of hardship. And so the change that we have to make, we have to make an immediate change. And we have to realize that whenever you hear a prohibition, you have to abstain from just like the companions did. I'm going to give you one more example. And this was a companion by the name of Abdullah ibn Rawaha. Abdullah ibn Rawaha was coming to the masjid. And it was Jumu'ah. And the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he saw that there were some people in the back of the masjid. They were standing up. And as a result of that, he said, Everybody sit down. Ijlisu. Abdullah ibn Rawaha was still walking to the masjid. But when he heard the familiar voice of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam commanding the companions to sit down, he was still outside the masjid in the sun, but he sat where he was. He refused to take even another step because he was afraid of going against the orders of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He did not want to take another step. That's how the companions were. And when the khut khutbah was over and the people who were passing him up who came later on, they saw him sitting there, they informed the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam approached him afterwards and he said, May Allah increase you in the obedience of Allah in His Messenger. <coughs> That's how the companions were. And then you start wondering, why is our condition, the condition of the Ummah different? It's because we need to make that change. The companions, they were quick in the obedience of Allah and His Messenger. They were quick in the obedience of Allah and His Messenger. But for us, we're always delaying. We're always saying that, inshallah, there will come a time. Or inshallah, let me um, finish this or, fin or finish that. But we also sometimes, we end up changing maybe one week or one time when you hear the khutbah or you hear a lecture, you come home and you say, inshallah, inshallah, I'm going to be a better person. I'm going to be a better person. And then what, what ends up happening? It lasts for how long? It lasts for two weeks. It lasts for one month. And then we go back to being what we were before. As if we didn't hear anything, inshallah. Then we hear about a conference and we go to that conference again and we're like happy with ourselves, alhamdulillah. You know, sometimes we go to these conferences and alhamdulillah, mashallah. And you go back home, then it's the same thing again next month. So you just start going up and down and it's like, a, it's like the stock market just crashing and then all of a sudden going up again a little bit, then it crashes again. How can we keep ourselves, how, how can, what, what can we do to make a permanent, a true change? Well first of all we have to realize we have to change immediately, don't delay. Secondly, we have to be consistent because the Messenger of Allah وسلم, said, خير الأعمال أدومها وإن قل. The best of deeds, the best of deeds are, are the are, are the deeds which are most consistent, even if it is a small amount. And so, what we do, what we need to do, is we have to be consistent. We have to make a change. And how did the companions of the Prophet? What did the companions of the Prophet do? to help them be consistent. 
Well, let me give you a few pointers from a hadith, from a couple of hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Abu Hurairah radiyallahu anhu, he said, from the day that I heard from the mouth of my Khalil, and my Khalil means my, my one and only love, my one, my love, someone whom you are very close to, your best friend, that's your love. He said, my Khalili. From the day I heard from his mouth, I've never left these actions. In other words, he, was, he would always do these actions. What were those, he said, these three, what were those three actions? He said, I would always, there were, I would fast three days in a month, and I would always, I would always pray my witr prayer, at least pray my witr prayer before I would go to sleep. And I would always pray the duha prayer, the morning prayer, which means this is the prayer after sunrise. And he said, from the day I heard from the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I never left it. So these were the things that you might, th you might think about these things and you say, you know, it's not too difficult, right? Well, because he's applying the hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in which the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said the best of deeds are that which is most consistent, even if it's just a small amount. So what's the lesson here? The lesson here is every one of us, we have to pick a small, a deed that we can be consistent and do from this day on until the day we die. But do not pick, or do not choose a deed that you know you cannot be consistent. And do not choose an amount where you know that you cannot be consistent with. And so I don't want you to, unless you, mashallah, are you're so used to it already, I don't want you to just say, inshallah, every single night, I'm going to pray eight rakahs of tahajjud prayer from now until the day I die. Most of us will not be able to be consistent with that. I want you to choose a deed where you can be consistent. Choose an amount of amount of Qur'an that you recite every single day. Choose an amount of sadaqah that you will give every week. Choose a deed like for example visiting the sick. Choose a bi-monthly deed, maybe tri-monthly. Every three months I'm going to visit at least one person from now until the day that I die. And if you're consistent, if you've chosen some deeds and you're consistent, then your Iman won't crash. But I want you, for example, maybe the brothers can say, Inshallah, I'm going to pray in the masjid once every three days at least. That means the least is once every three days. Make that your character to the point where, let's say, for two days you didn't go to the masjid. And then the whole day you didn't go to the masjid on the third day. And it's Asr already. And you are very tired. I'm oh, sorry, not, it's Isha already, night time. This is the last prayer. You say to yourself, O oh, so and so, you never let three days pass except you're going to be in the masjid at least once. And of course, most of the time you're going to be in the masjid more than that. But I want you to choose a minimum requirement for yourself. A minimum. A minimal amount of deed that you're going to do. And so, just like how we plan to be successful in business, we should also plan to be successful in life and put that plan into action and put it in even in writing. So I want you to choose a deed like for example Qur'an, an amount that you're going to read every single day and it could be just half a page or maybe five verses, but choose an amount where it doesn't matter how busy you may be you can still put it into your schedule. Even if you have your finals today, your final exams are today, and you don't have time, you can still put that into your schedule. And of course, when you start to read, you will find out 
that when you choose, you have chosen to read, let's say, five verses a day, most of the time you will recite five verses, and because you started it, you will generally read more than that on a regular basis. But you have to make that a habit and make that part of your character. And, if you, and you have to be consistent with it. Because that's what's most beloved to Allah is that consistency. And that consistency is what cleanses your heart. That consistency is what keeps us close to Allah and keeps us strong. And that's why our prayers are at different intervals. So that we will consistently cleanse ourselves because we are, even our bodies, our bodies get dirty. And every day we have to take a shower and brush our teeth. Imagine if you didn't brush your teeth for two or three days, what would happen? And that's why when we pray, it's like taking a shower. It's like taking a shower. And so every single day, our souls also need the Qur'an, need the remembrance of Allah. We need to pray so that it cleanses our hearts. And that's why those people who are not consistent with some of these cleansing, the rituals of, of Islam, like those people who, 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 some people they say, you know, um, so-and-so doesn't pray, but he has a good heart. That person who says, oh, he has a good heart, or, but he doesn't pray. It's like a person who's, who, who doesn't brush their teeth and they say their mouth is clean. <laughs> like it doesn't happen that way. Well, you can't brush your teeth like, okay, I'm going to brush my teeth for five hours, but I'm going to do it once a month. No, it's not going to work that way the rest of the days. You're going to smell really bad. It doesn't matter if you spent 10 hours. There, it has to be consistent, even if it's a small amount. Even if it's a small amount. I knew this was coming. I have a, I have a bad reputation in Seattle. They say never give a woman a telephone or a Sadh Abdul Bari a microphone. <laughs> so we have to be consistent. And so the, the secret to changing and making a true change, not just one of those changes where you change for a few weeks or a few days and you go back to what you're doing, you have to be consistent. And how do we maintain consistency? Choose a small amount and then don't add any to it unless you're consistent. You know, even psychologists, they say that if you are able to be consistent for six months in anything, then it becomes part of your character. And when it becomes part of your character, then it becomes easy for you. And prayer will no longer be a burden, but it will be an enjoyment because you will enjoy it. Because it's a part of your character. And you know how sometimes we label certain, you know, we label ourselves. You say, you know, I'm such and such, and you make sure you live up to that label. Like I know, you know, my sister, she gets it from her mother. She, mashallah, she's very clean. So when I go to her house, sometimes like I'll put something like a little thing here on the table. Like, and she, in her house, there's not a single dust. She's that type of person. And I'll say, you, it looks like you didn't clean the table that much, that well. Then she'll go, no, no, no. I, I, when I clean the table, there's not a single dust. So uh, come here, come here. But she doesn't realize, I'm probably the one to put it, I'm just testing her. Because I know how she is. That's her character. There's no way after she cleans and there's dust. And she lives up to that. And so it becomes easy for her because that's who she is. And so when you become, when you, when it comes to the rituals, when the <coughs> worship, prayer, and fasting, when you label yourself, you know, I don't, I pray in the masjid. I'm a person that when it's time to pray, I'm at the masjid. And then when something happens, no matter what happens, no matter who is playing on TV, no. You say to yourself, Muhammad, you only pray in the masjid. That's who you are. And so once you get used to that, it becomes easy. It's easier. And that's why some of the scholars before, they used to say, I dragged myself until I made it cry. And it cried and cried until it smiled. Because you, at the beginning, it's difficult. But you have to be consistent. 
even if it's a small amount. And you know what? You know how beneficial that is? Even in our daily, day, daily, daily deeds or, you know, the things that we do daily. You know, when I, was, uh, when I first went to the Islamic University of Medina, I was a little bit, when I grew up in the, uh, in the United States, I was a little bit spoiled. I had to, I have, two, I had, you know, I have two sisters and they, they did everything. Right? They did everything. When it came to like washing the dishes and everything like that, I would, I would try to help my mother and my mother would say, who washed the dishes today? She would, then I would say, me? Like I was trying to help her out. So don't do it again. Then I'm going, why? There's still soap on here. Like next time, do it better. Do it better. But then you know what? I would, I never, you know, I didn't have to do those things, because my 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 sisters would do it, and they were happy to do it. And that's how they were. And that's how my mother raised them up. They were happy to do it. And even afterwards, they're like, that's that's what we love to do, because we're a clean clean family. There's no way there's going to be. But you know what? When I went to Medina, I didn't have people cleaning my dishes for me, cleaning the house for me. And, then, and so I'm looking around and I'm saying, you know, it's, I'm not used to this dirtiness here. Like all this dust here, I'm not used to it. You go, I got to change. Right? I got to start cleaning. And you know how it is, sometimes we're not used to it. It's a little bit difficult. It takes a long time. So I said, what am I going to do? I feel like it's a burden upon me, you know, to clean this much every single time, every Saturday, like, you know, I'm spending half the day trying to clean up my dorm room and everything. So, you know, it's not working. Like, I should be happy. I should be happy to do this, right? Like, my sisters can do it, and they're like smiling. <laughs> Why can't I do that? And you know what I ended up doing? I said, you know what? Before I do anything, if I leave my room, and I come back, I'm going to clean for three minutes. So that's what I did. Every time I left my room, I would clean for three minutes. Every time, it doesn't matter if I left it just to get a breather, or just to go to the bathroom, or somebody called me, and if it's two o'clock in the morning, and somebody came or something, I need to go to the bathroom. At 2 a.m. I leave. When I come back, I have to clean for three minutes before I go back to sleep. If I want to study, I have to clean for three minutes before I go. I, I, before I study, anytime that door opens, and I'm coming back into the room, it's three minutes. And you know I did that. And you know you never think, oh, three minutes. Oh man, that's a lot of time. Right? Three minutes is not much. And so I started cleaning, and alhamdulillah, because when you're consistent, you don't realize how much time you've spent cleaning. And you know, a couple of days later. I look at the room, I say, MashaAllah, it's pretty nice. It's very clean, I never felt any burden. And to the point where I ran out of things to clean, I'm looking for dust. Right? When I come in, I just cleaned a few minutes ago, so I actually decreased it to one minute. But every time I would leave, I never sit down until I clean for one minute. And then I come home, I mean, I come into the room, I clean for one minute, and every single time, it's always clean. But I never say, oh, it's so difficult to one minute of cleaning. One minute is nothing. But if you're consistent, it's very effective. And it's very easy. And you don't feel like it's a burden at all. And that's why, that's what we need to do when it comes to worship also. It's that little bit, little, little bit of things, that, that consistency. That's why even in my car, you know, before I used to clean every Saturday. And every, on the weekends or whenever I had time. And then, of course, I have, you know, I have kids, right? And, you know, it's a lot of, a lot of uh, trash and everything in the back. So I did the same thing. I made it a rule in my car. Anyone who, call, anyone who comes into my car, if the door opens, has to take at least three pieces of garbage. Or you guys call rubbish, right? Three pieces out. Every time. I'm, of course, not, not guests, okay? Family members. Like my... my my, uh, my, my sons and so forth, they would fight for the garbage that's inside the car. And they would call for it before the door opens. They would say, I got that one, I got that one. Because, you know, they're strapped down with the, the seat belt. And they have to call for it first before their other brother takes it. So he gets to leave early before he, because now he has to look for garbage. All right? But then I don't have to worry. On Saturdays, I never have to clean. Because it's always clean. Because every time, our family, what we do is when we go, like, you know, when you go to the, the supermarket or Walmart, everybody heads to the garbage first before they enter. Why? Because everybody's got garbage in their hand. 
Uh, everyone in the whole, the whole car, it doesn't matter who it is, everyone's got a couple of pieces in their hands, and then they throw it in there. And they never complain because three pieces is what? Nothing, three pieces. But you do it consistently, you never have to make time for it. It becomes part of your routine and part of your habits. And so, change and change now, and choose a small amount and be consistent. I'm gonna, I'll end it with this, inshallah. Some of the scholars, they kept on increasing, increasing in, these, in the consistency of their deeds. That it came to the point where, like for example, do you know Sayyid ibn Musayyib, Sayyid al-Tabi'i? He said, when he was older, he said, for 40 years, 40 years, I never missed the first takbir in the masjid. Do you know how difficult that is? For 40 years, there was never a single prayer, obligatory prayer. As long as he was home or in Medina, for 40 years, he never missed the first takbir. Allahu Akbar, when the Imam says Allahu Akbar, he's in the masjid for 40 years. And if you think that's easy, try it for four days and you know how, 40, how, many, how difficult 40 years is. Try it for four days. But how was he able to achieve that, to, to, to that level? Because he put that label upon himself, O oh Sa'id, as if he's saying, O oh Sa'id, you do not, the Imam does not say Allahu Akbar except you're in the masjid. That's you. And so he's always trying to live up to that label that he has put upon himself. And it's not difficult because that's him, that's his habit. And so every time we have to start now, <coughs> choose an amount to give the sadaqah consistently. Don't choose too much. Don't say, inshallah, I'm going to give 20 pounds a week if you can't afford it. If you can't afford it, alhamdulillah. But if you can't afford it, but make sure it's consistent. Maybe, okay, I'm going to give what, uh, five pounds a month at least. But there's not a single month in your life except that you're going to give at least five pounds. No matter how much money you have, five pounds is something you can afford for the rest of your life it's a month, each month. Or choose a weekly deed. And I want you to write some of these deeds and put it in your door, on your door, your bedroom door. So when at night time when you're looking, what did I do today? And then you do it and you say, that's me. And if you can, let's say you're, you're consistent with that and you're able to do it for six months or maybe a whole year, you've never missed it then inshallah, maybe add a little bit. Like for example, let's say, okay, three verses a day. Okay, did I read three verses? Okay, I did read three verses. Oh, I haven't sat down to read three verses. Let me read three verses. And you might be really tired, well, after you read three verses, go to sleep. But if you're not too tired, three verses is not much, but when you, once you start the next few pages, and by the time you know it, you're reading 10 pages instead of just three verses. But that's your minimum. You only read that when you, you only read the three verses like when you can't do more. But if you're consistent, then you won't have that crash. So if you want to change, and you want to have that continuous, to continue instead of just waiting for the Imam or the Khatib every time Kai comes, MashaAllah, your battery, your Iman is high. Now you need to charge, recharge. You gotta learn how to charge your own batteries. And that's how you do it. Being consistent and seeking knowledge, being consistent in everything. And remember the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, خَيْرُ الْأَعْمَالِ أَدْوَمُهَا وَإِنْ قَالْ The best of deeds are that which is most consistent, even if it is a small amount. جزاكم الله خير وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى نبينا محمد